Hi there friends, welcome back to another video on paying it forward. Um, I have some more questions from the community that I'm going to uh, cover in this video, so let's just get straight into it. So there's a couple of questions here that you can see that are all very much related to, um, you know, the Azure DevOps API um, and how you can get information in there. The first one is like, uh, how can I get the results of the uh, release pipeline to be viewed in Power BI? And the second one is about the release stages. And the third one there is about uh, sprints. So like, is there an ability to view work items across sprints? So um, I thought the first thing we would do is we'd quickly have a look at the API reference and uh, then we will basically go into actually, you know, looking at and getting these together. So uh, let's do that. So for those of you who haven't seen it before, and this is the Azure DevOps REST API reference, this is a really helpful place to kind of get and peel back the layers of uh, what's within Azure DevOps um, and actually be able to then, you know, extend the information that you can get for using an OData query, which is obviously the way that we've used it in some of the previous videos. So kind of having an understanding of this um, resource is really helpful. Um, and let's pick out the ones that were associated to the questions that we asked. So the first one talked about pipelines. So we just give it a quick filter and we can basically see here we've got pipelines. So we can see there's a whole section on pipelines that we've got here. Um, you can see an overview of what there is. So we're going to select the pipelines and we want to basically list the pipelines first of all. So you can basically see we get a reference for that. Let's uh, duplicate the tab. So we've got the pipelines. Now we want to have the uh, sprints, which are also known as iterations. So here we can just search as iterations. Um, you can see there's a section here. This is something else. Um, let's have a look. Um, for DevOps. Sometimes I just search on uh, somewhere else. So here we go, list iterations. We've got the second one. Um, so let's uh, now have a look at how to actually get this data into uh, Power BI um, and using Power Query. All right, so I've opened Power Query um, and I'm going to, it's just a blank report and I want to get data and then basically start with a blank query. And so you'll see this will open the uh, query editor and then I can basically do, um, it's already got one here. I'm going to open the advanced editor. And this is the important part in terms of how you structure this and use this uh, repeatedly to be able to use all of those APIs to pull that information into um, uh, Power Query. So the first one we're going to do, uh, what, firstly what we're going to do is use this particular structure. Um, so you basically let, you know, use the source of uh, VSTS, uh, Visual Studio Team Services, which was the previous name for Azure DevOps contents. Uh, we're then going to insert the API reference and then that JSON that was returned from there, we're going to convert it into a table, basically. Um, so let's take that and put it into here. And then let's take the API reference that we're going to use. So let's start by uh, choosing the, um, yeah, we can do the iterations first. Um, so I'm just going to drop the reference in here. You'll need to remove the get. And then we'll need to actually put in a project, an organization, a project, and a team. Um, so let's quickly open Azure DevOps so we can kind of find those. So this is an Azure DevOps project that I'm using for uh, developing an application um, here at Microsoft. Um, and there's a couple of places you can come to to basically find the team information. You can come into your backlog and then see here where it says the team. Um, and what you'll notice if I go up here to the um, top of the URL, you'll notice it has the organization, it has the project, and then over here it has the team information. So it's using kind of all three of the elements that we need to have to be able to construct the um, API reference in Power Query to be able to get the information that we need. All right, so I'm going to take the URL from here. I'm just going to take it up to the team and then take over the organization and project and I'll clean it up as we move across. So I'm coming back over here. I'm going to replace the organization, the project and the team. And I'm just going to drop it, the information over here. Just make sure I remove. You can see there's a couple of things that I need to remove, which is like this backlog information over here. Um, so I'll get rid of that and make sure it's all good. So that all looks good. Okay. And then if we just hit done, then you'll basically see now I get a bunch of sprints and their IDs. Um, we'll look into um, more of how to reference these in a minute. So, and we'll do that for the uh, pipelines as well. So now uh, let's use the second one, which was obviously the pipeline information. And let's start with that one. 
So in this one, for now, I just want to list all of the pipelines that are in the project as the first step. So I'm just going to bring this one over. Let's take a duplicate of uh, of this one and let's nicely rename it. So this is the, um, let's call this the list of sprints. And then we're going to do this one as the list of pipelines. Okay. And then we come into the advanced editor and we can make some small changes to the API um, but so that it basically uses the one that we want. So once you have one, you can just then change some of the bits at the end um, rather than having to rewrite the whole thing. In this one, we've just got to get rid of the project name um, and then the everything after the project, basically, we need to change. So we can just come over here and delete this part and adjust it as such. Make sure you don't have double um, forward slashes. So I hope you can kind of see in the middle there that we've just kind of adjusted it as that. Um, and then we have it um, you know, ready to run. So we can quickly run this one. And then you'll see in this one, I just get a single um, you know, uh, pipeline uh, that I get back. So uh, again, this is the way to list your pipelines. Just a quick check on the questions. We've obviously now got a list of pipelines um, that we need uh, within our report. The other things you might want to do is to understand the number of runs for a pipeline. So again, this is um, you need to have already the IDs of the uh, um, pipelines to be able to then retrieve the runs, um, and that would then be just using this, um, you know, uh, list the runs uh, for the specific pipelines. Um, obviously, in this case, where you have like one to many, where you may have like one pipeline with multiple runs you would need to structure the approach to retrieving those, um, similar to how I did in the video, which you can see in the top corner over there in that direction. Uh, so linking to that one in terms of how you can then, you know, structure the uh, query to, to let's say, um, apply to each of the listed pipelines to then view all of the runs. Um, but in the example project that I have, I don't have any runs of the pipeline. Uh, so I won't be able to show that in this video, but uh, again, for those folks who requested that, if you have any questions um, or you want me to go through that, uh, please let me know and then I'll prepare a project where we have all of that information there. Um, however, in the other question that I got, I do want to kind of complete the picture, which is that um, it asks specifically, like, we want to showcase sprint tasks. So obviously you want to be able to see the associated work items that are associated to a sprint. Uh, so how do we do that? So the first thing is obviously to use an OData query, which we've done so many times now, but it's a great way of just getting the base data from your, um, you know, from your Azure DevOps environment to be able to uh, get, um, connect this information and relate it together. All right, so all I'm doing here is basically loading in all of the work items. And then you'll see that we actually have the column that we can use to associate it to the uh, sprint that it's related to. So we have all the information here. If we just go to the columns and we can basically say go to a column and then if you search for iteration, you'll see that we have an iteration SK here that we can go across to. And if we just pick one here, like this top one, we've basically got 985. You can't, probably can't see that so good, but we've got here 985A9, so on and so on. Um, and I'm just going to copy this. And then if we go over to the list of sprints, you can actually see that sprint zero. So you can see we have a relationship between the two fit, the two bits of data. So if we wanted to, for example, uh, quickly close and apply this. And so we then have the data ready to create a report. We can uh, first double check the model view and uh, create a relationship. So let's create a relationship between those two fields. So we're going to here come and manage a relationship. And we're basically going to say the um, list of sprints. We've got the ID here, and then we want to have the work items, and we're going to connect it to the iteration SK. So what it would be is one sprint to many work items. So we're going to make that relationship active, and then hit close. And what we can then basically do is if we wanted to have a quick filter, slicer, I should say, and we want to have the uh, sprint. We're going to bring the name of the sprint in here. Let's change that because I never like this uh, type of 
I prefer a drop down. <laughs> and we're going to quickly call it something that makes sense. Sprint name. And then if we quickly put a table in. And we're going to drop into the table um, the work items. So we're just going to put in the title. And we're going to take the ID. And then we're just going to say state. Something like that, and then we could put work item type, type, and then as one as well. See if it's kind of an epic or a feature or anything, and then we can actually change this from account to just don't summarize. So we've got the work item next to it. Let's tidy this up a little bit. And kind of put it all like this. Um, getting nice and big now. Okay. We're just going to, let's bring the work item type above on the left hand side here. And then we're going to add another filter as an example. And let's add in the work item type. Okay. And then we're going to rename this one. You'll see we now have the ability to basically filter, so we can say what are the work items that are for sprint zero. Let's make the table a bit bigger. And then if we only want to focus on which epics are being covered, which features are being covered, or which tasks have been done. Um, and then as you, get, as you see, you can go through each of those and see which associated tasks have been completed uh, based on which of the iterations that you have. So... Uh, um, I hope you found that useful. All right, so let's just do a quick summary of the video that we've seen here today. Uh, so the most important thing is when you're trying to, you know, retrieve details that are in addition to what's on the OData feed, that you get familiar with the um, Azure DevOps, let's call it here, the API reference, um, you know, for the REST API. And you can, there's so many different things that you can pull down uh, using this uh, guide. Um, and I'll continue probably to make more videos on different ones based on the questions that I get. Um, but you can see in this one, I was focusing on two of the um, areas. One of them was getting the list of pipelines. And the second one was getting the list of uh, sprints or in this case, iterations. Um, so what was really important was basically understanding how to use the right, um, as you have it here, um, query, uh, advanced query to be able to pull that information down. I've dropped it in the comments. So of course you can access this down there. Um, and I'll give some of the example queries also on my uh, GitHub that will be linked down below as well. Uh, but we took those, incorporated those into um, the data model that we have for, uh, for our report so that we could then return the list of sprints and list of pipelines. Then we pulled down the work items to be able to obviously relate um, the sprints to those um, so that we could then see, you know, how everything is kind of connecting to together. Um, and then we use that to build a really quick and dirty uh, report uh, that basically shows which work items are associated to which sprint. I really hope you found this video useful. Um, I really enjoyed putting it together. Um, if you have any uh, further questions, uh, don't hesitate to drop them down below. I love getting those and uh, being able to answer them. Don't forget to pay it forward. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And uh, until next time, uh, see you soon.